What's going on everyone, my name is Tom from Dreadlabs and today I'm going to show you a life-changing technique in Adobe Photoshop. Dreadlabs. So what I'm going to talk about today saved me hours when doing client work. This tip single-handedly made me a millionaire. Okay, that's not true, but it definitely made me one of the graphic designers of all time. Anyways, what I'm going to be talking about is non-destructive editing. So if you don't know what non-destructive editing is, it's basically a way in Photoshop, a couple of techniques combined, which you can use in order to put like lots of effects on one photo and then changing that photo afterwards. And it sounds a little bit complicated when I explain it in text, so I'm just going to show you in Photoshop right now. All right, so what we have here is a design. I did this really, really quickly. As you can see in the layer menu, it's a lot of effects stacked on top of one another. Basically, it's a photo of me and it says Tom from Dreadlips. It's doo-doo head. doesn't really matter, but let's say that this is a client artwork and the client delivered this picture to you and you did all of these effects on top of one another and the client really likes it but in the end they will say uh, I really like it but we need to change the photo we got another photo of the artist and we need to change that in order to do that so if you rasterized all of your artworks you're probably in a lot of trouble because you have to do all of those steps again and if that's the case then you might either have to control Z a lot of times or you should have like written down every single effect that you stack on top of each other in order to achieve that effect or in the case of non-destructive editing you should have used a smart object so if you don't know what a smart object is essentially it's a smaller Photoshop file within a Photoshop file so let me just explain this real quick i'm just going to go to unsplash and find a picture so uh, let's grab this person that i found on unsplash and let's say we'll just make a new file real quick all right so we paste it in our person so let me just explain something that will happen if we stack effects on top of each other so the first thing that we did was we did an oil paint filter uh, it looks a little bit ai right now let's go to the filter gallery and we'll do a graphic pen filter We'll add some noise. We'll blur it a little bit. And we'll add a gradient map. Alright, so let's say that this is the finalized artwork and the client says, okay, I like the effects that you put on here, but we don't really like the picture. We want to change the picture up. Then we're screwed, right? So what we should have done is, let's go back like all these steps, right click, convert to smart object, and then let's redo all of those steps. So I kind of need to remember what I actually did, uh, but I think it was an oil paint. And it was the filter gallery, I think. Noise. Blur and then the adjustment layer or the gradient map. All right, so let's say now we have done basically all these same steps, but we have a smart object. So what we can do now is double click on the thumbnail and then we can see our original picture. And let's say that the original picture was supposed to be uh, this guy. I don't know, maybe I mixed up the wrong artist or something. Let's just drag and drop in the picture of the other guy, paste this in place, and we'll save this up. And once it's finished saving up, we can just click away. And as you can see, the effects are already applied on uh, the smart object. So we don't really have to do anything else. We don't need to repeat the steps. We don't need to write everything down. We don't need to command Z anything. We can just do this with a simple step and that's using smart objects. So essentially that's non-destructive editing for you in a nutshell. So there you have it guys, non-destructive editing. I hope you really start doing this because this saved me tons and tons of time when doing design work. This also works really well when combining Illustrator files into Photoshop and other stuff as well. So instead of rasterizing, consider using smart objects. Now one downside of this though is that it probably makes your Photoshop files a lot larger so if you don't have enough space on your computer you might want to consider grabbing a external hard drive if you want to use smart objects from now on anyways i hope this quick video was useful to you as always if you want to support me in the channel you can become a patron of mine by becoming a patron of mine you'll get access to all the project files from all of my tutorials a 15 percent discount in my asset web store as well as an exclusive role in the dread Test community discord if you go one tier up you'll also get access to exclusive videos such as how to start a clothing brand from scratch how to make a death metal logo from scratch as well as how to make a y2k ray flyer so if this is something you're interested in there's a link down in the description and if if you don't have the budget to support Red Labs, of course that's completely fine leaving a like a comment and a subscribe on this video if you haven't already already does a lot so with all of that being said this is Tom from Dreadlabs tuning out thank you so much for watching and I'll hopefully see you guys in the next video